uh, attendees. Yes, I will. Yeah. Great. That would be perfect. All right. So, so the recording has started. Excellent. And I'm going to just pull up my agenda here. All right. So I'm calling to order the October 17th meeting of the African Heritage Reparation Assembly at 2.07 p.m. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone, and please see the instructions below. Um, actually, I didn't even need to say that, but <laughs> I'm, I'm going fast. Okay. Uh, no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Um, and given that we have a couple folks um, in, I'm going to do a sound check in just a second, and then we're going to do um, a public comment period initially, and then we'll have one a little bit later as well. So uh, let's see if everybody can be heard and can hear. So we'll start with you, Ms. Bridges. I'm right here. I can hear you. Great. All right. And Dr. Rhodes? I'm here. Okay, great. And uh, Dr. Shabazz? Yes, Shabazz is present. Great. And Hala? Hala is present. Okay, wonderful. And if you could just give me one quick second, please. Um, I'm just going to put my mute on for one second. All righty, so I am going to call a period of public comment and I'll just read our statement here. During the public comment period, the chair will recognize members of the public. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name, pronouns, and residential address. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes at the discretion of the chair based upon the number of people who wish to speak. The AHRA will not engage in a dialogue or comment on a matter raised during public comment, but we will be listening very closely. So if you would like to make public comment, please go ahead and raise your hand and Pamela will bring you into the room. Hi, is, Pamela, did you call on me? It's Maura. Yes. Okay. You're in, Mara. <laughs> okay. Um, I just wanted to say that on Saturday, the um, Amherst Community Land Trust had a small but productive meeting. I think Irv was there, so he can add to this. Um, we had about 15 people that attended, and it was a beautiful day with lots of other stuff happening. But we did discuss two things that will be becoming, coming before our board in the near future, and one is can people who own land trust houses um, rent rooms in them? And currently our land lease does not permit that, but we're thinking of changing that. And the other thing is establishing a policy for a repair fund for the homeowners. Um, what kind of things will be covered for repairs and how that'll be financed and things like that. So that's kind of complicated, but we need to work out a policy. So, and hopefully we will be getting um, another homeowner for using the first time homeowner supplement in the near future. Valley CBC. Excellent. Okay. Thank you so much, Mara. And thank you for, um, you know, I'm so glad that Dr. Rhodes was able to be there and would definitely love to hear um, his experience with that. And thank you for sharing. Uh, it sounds like it was a wonderful day. All right. So if there's anyone else who would like to make public comment, please go ahead and raise your hand. And we'll definitely come back and we'll have another period of public comment later. So if something comes up. Okay. All right. So I was hoping that we could begin the meeting um, with, uh, actually, Dr. Rhodes, did you want to add anything about 
your experience on Saturday at the walk at the land trust walk? Uh, nothing to add more than what Amaro just said. Okay, great. I I said tomorrow that I'm really looking forward to us continuing to strengthen the partnership with the land trust and um, invited them um, and encouraged them to come to our listening session on the 27th. So I was hoping we could start um, maybe Hala or Dr. Shabazz could give if there is an update from BAM. I know there was a meeting, um, I believe, last weekend. And if there is any feedback or any information that, oh, okay, hang on. We just, let me make sure we're still, I think Dr. Shabazz just got, he's probably switching over. He's in the attendees. <laughs> okay. So we'll just wait um, for Dr. Shabazz to come back on. So I think there was a meeting of the Black Assembly of Amherst, Massachusetts on Saturday. And I was hoping that uh, Hala and or Dr. Shabazz may want to give an update about that meeting. So I'll start with you, Hala. Is there anything that you'd like to offer with respect to an update from the BAM meeting or would you prefer Dr. Shabazz to? I will say we had a, a very thorough and great conversation. I'm sorry, I'm traveling, I'm flying back today, but um, so I think if Dr. Shabazz, you feel great giving them the updated, because we did come to a conclusion that we'd love to share with the, uh, um, the assembly, so thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Dr. Shabazz, would you like to add to that? Well, I certainly um, appreciate Hala to come back. Anything I, I miss from it, but I just would say that um, it was a small hybrid meeting. Uh, we did have an in, uh, some in-person attendance, and uh, it was our first attempt um, since we've been organized as BAM. To, uh, to try to provide for an in-person uh, opportunity. And so we were at the uh, New Africa House on the campus of the University of Massachusetts. And um, the, uh, in that space, we were also able to um, bring in the, the Zoom and, and, and have the Zoom screen up as well. And so uh, others, uh, more people did attend uh, that way uh, on this occasion. So, um, the uh, discussion was good. The discussion was robust. Um, you know, part of the uh, kind of part of the discussion also hinged around the what I would call the injury area, or what we call the injury area of uh, of, of criminal criminal uh, punishment and and uh, ways in which we can be a uh, you know, in, in repairing can move toward being a less, uh, you know, punitive oriented uh, uh, kind of town. And, and uh, uh, so some concerns brought in about that and where that might stand, some discussions around the uh, uh, who is owed, the eligibility question or who is owed. But, um, but again, I may just not be remembering right at this moment, um, in terms of um, uh, other kinds of uh, conclusions or points, but we did um, affirm, you know, the need, the desire to to continue in our outreach efforts, and um, and particularly uh, we're 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 looking to to turn out and support the uh, uh, event Bridge for Unity is organizing in November, uh, looking at um, you know reparations uh, for. Uh, our, 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 our African ancestors. And so I can talk more about that at another point, but Hala, was there something else maybe more particular I'm not recalling right now? I was uh, Hala, um, thinking about I'm the Sorry, so sorry to interrupt you. I'm just gonna make sure that Yvonne can be heard and can hear us quickly. Yes. Okay, <laughs> all right, Hala, yes, go ahead. Can. <laughs> Welcome. No, you definitely covered it. Uh, the, the conclusive thing I was, feeling is about eligibility, but yeah. So you covered what I remember. Thank you, Dr. Chavez. Okay, thank you so much for giving that, um, that report. 
And you'll see on the agenda today, and this was um, something that I'm, I'm actually going to, I'm going to pass it over to Dr. Rhodes in a minute, but Dr. Rhodes sent me an email. He had um, some thoughts and, and cons things that he wanted to make sure that we were getting to the top of our list here. Um, and that included eligibility criteria as well as defining harm. So uh, before we move into our engagement consultation campaign and updates on that, uh, Dr. Rhodes, would you like to share a little bit about the email that you sent to me and um, why we have these things on the agenda today and what you're thinking? Well, you know, most all of those things came, as I said to Michelle in the email, uh, when these uh, nightly visitations that come to me in relationship to unfinished business and my anxieties surface and come to the top, uh, top I, uh, I have this habit of getting rid of them by putting them on to other people. So I uh, emailed uh, uh, Michelle to let her know some of my thoughts. And some of those, uh, and Michelle uh, put some of those on the agenda. But the, the, the main thing is that I, I feel the crunch of time coming on and that there are some things that we really just must get done. And so my sense of anxiety was around, hey, our expiration date is at the end of June. And there are really important things to have to get done. Among them, chief among them is eligibility criteria, the process for doing that outlining and confirming the harm that has been done, et cetera, et cetera, getting those things done, cod codified and, and put down in writing and communicated uh, to the public or, or whoever may we think will need that, especially obviously the town council. So those are, those are the things that uh, were uh, on my mind and some of them are reflected in the agenda. Thank you, Dr. Rhodes. And um, I think if it, this is a good transition into talking about our upcoming listening session in the sense that I think we're going to receive, I hope we'll receive a lot of feedback and hear the voice of African heritage residents during that listening session that will begin to give us a starting point for those discussions to happen. I don't think that means that we need to wait until that happens to start having those discussions, however. Um, so I think more formally in our next meeting, um, once we've sort of gotten some of this engagement stuff um, a little bit more formalized and solidified, then we can start to really have that conversation. One of the things that I heard you say, Dr. Rhodes, is the possibility of subcommittees. Um, and so I just wanted to remind that and see, was there, was there a particular idea or strategy that you had in mind with respect to that? Yeah, it's one of the things that I realize is that there is a lot of work to be done, and we can't expect the chair to do all the work. And it's and you know since we are limited in terms of the size of a subcommittee, it either has to be a subcommittee of one or two. And and my idea or my thought was that why not break some of these topics that I mentioned down and have them be the responsibility of an individual or two people. Uh, to start uh, to work on. That's basically what, what my thought was. Yeah, and so I'm going to check in with Pamela and Athena and perhaps Lynn even just to see what uh, in terms of the number of people in our body, where we would be safe. I think it would have to be limited to two to keep us really safe. Um, but I'll get a little bit more direction about that. I also want to welcome Alexis. I'm so glad you're here. Can you hear us, Alexis? Yes, I can. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> um, so that's that's great. Okay. And if there are other ideas, like I know that Dr. Shabazz has spoken about some framework for how we might be able to have those discussions. Um, and so I would very much appreciate that in advance of the next meeting so that I can um, have that framework ready for us for those discussions. Um, okay, so let's just uh, jump into our community engagement 
activities here that we have going on. And I'm going to just give you a bit of an update. Um, just pull up my, just, excuse me. Okay, so I think our Engage Amherst project page is looking really good. We've definitely um, highlighted and brought up our inclusion portal to the top. We've also created a link from the town of Amherst's AHRA page back to the community or to the Engage Amherst site. Um, so that's something so that if folks are going to the town's website, they'll be able to come back to Engage Amherst. Um, and then we have our portal and we're continuing to receive uh, folks that are signing up for the portal, continuing to get the word out about that in various ways. Um, in terms of boots on the ground, I am organizing another effort this weekend with the senators at Amherst College. Um, they would like to get out and talk to folks about the upcoming listening session in particular. So if anybody would like to join them this weekend or knows folks that would like to join them um, in going to more of the complexes and into neighborhoods, um, that would be fantastic. Just let me know and I'll make those connections. And then uh, we have... Uh, um, our listening session. That's what I really want to spend the bulk of our time finalizing here for us um, and really uh, strategizing with you all about how in these next couple weeks we can get the word out to as many folks as possible. So I'll start by sharing so far what I have done um, is it's been in, I think, every paper. Um, so the Gazette, uh, Mass Live, the Amherst Indie. Um, it's been uh, in our community calendar um, at the town of Amherst. Um, I sent it to, at this point, all of the PGOs at all of the schools. Um, and so everybody has it. I've gotten some great response from that, that they'll be including the information in their next newsletters, which is really great. Um, and then I've also sent it out to some of our faith organizations. I sent it to uh, the folks who created the Stolen Beam series, who you know um, through the JCA. And um, I have, so I have sort of a running list um, of where I'm sending it and how I'm getting it out to folks. But what I wanted to ask is, how we might strategize, because it's possible that this might be our one and only in-person big listening session for full community. Um, and I really want to get as many folks there as possible from the community, community leaders, town leaders. Um, oh, I've also, of, of course, included um, press, uh, press and Earl Miller plan to be there um, and, and trying to get it out to other folks in the town as well. <laughs> so wondering if we might be able to brainstorm, like if each of us could identify two or three either individuals or people that we can commit to calling and talking to and, and, and inviting them warmly to join us on that night. Uh, Dr. Rhodes. Uh, two things. Uh, unfortunately, this uh, in the R event uh, corresponds in with the annual tr uh, trivia, and that's unfortunate because a lot of community people uh, will be involved with that. When I say community people, I mean the various groups usually send teams. Uh, and those teens come from all segments of the community. And a lot of those people are community leaders in one way or another. And, and unfortunately, they're, they're going to be involved with that. Uh, so that's one thought. The other thought is, uh, is that it's, uh, I, I know that I have compiled a list of 10 people who I've, uh, been firing emails off to individually and notifying them of uh, this upcoming listening session. And I think if each one of us would do the same, that that would cover a lot of people. 
Yeah, I think that that would be really great because we all have different um, folks from different um, parts of the community that we can reach out to. Um, I do want to, uh, let me go to you, Pamela, first, and then I'll, I'll continue. Pamela, please. Um, I just wanted to note that you guys are freezing. Uh, I don't know if anybody else had a frozen screen for a moment. I only heard a portion of Dr. Rhodes' uh, comments. So um, I'll, uh, I, I will uh, maybe chat with you or send you an email um, later, Michelle, about the segments that I if I miss something, because the screen is freezing on my on my on my end. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. For the minutes, absolutely. Um, we can fill in the blanks there. Um, and is anyone else having that problem? Ms. Bridges, yours was freezing as well. Yeah, for about ten seconds it was. Okay. And just now it did when you were talking. Okay. Um, yeah, mine is not freezing um, over here. Uh, so I don't know. Um, let's keep an eye on it. And we'll. Um, so Pamela, Dr. Rhodes was talking about the conflict with the trivia bee and and then also was talking about how we could reach people. And yeah, I, um, I, I, it's very unfortunate. I've, I've been sort of going through my own personal struggle with the um, conflict of the trivia bee being on the same night as our, our listening session. And um, what's interesting is the trivia bee, I think, has fallen on the same sort of time frame every year. It's been around for a long time, and it's an excellent. I've never personally attended it, but I know that it's a very, very fun event, and it's also for a great cause. Um, however, they announced it very late this year, um, assuming I think that that date was sort of a hold um, and. Uh, they didn't put it in the calendar. So when we were looking for dates, it wasn't in the calendar and I wasn't aware of it. Um, and it was not brought to my attention, even with all of the places that we put our event into. So it is unfortunate. Um, I think we're still going to have a really great turnout of folks um, and we're going to have town leaders and um, Mindy Dom, unfortunately, um, by legacy, the 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 sitting state rep is the host of that event, and so unfortunately, she won't be able to be there with us. So I've I've really been struggling with this conflict of of dates. I am very happy to say that although Alexis was um, due to be there um, in her capacity at Amherst Media. Um, we were able to work it out with Jim so that Alexis can be with us that night. So I'm really happy about that. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, and unfortunately, I think Lynn and Anna, who are our council president and vice president, will not be able to be there with us. But I know that there will be other counselors um, and other leaders and staff that will be there. So, um, Dr. Rhodes, you still have your hand up. I'm wondering if if that I'm was a whole it down. Okay. Um, so I like Herb's idea. If we can each come up with a list um, of five, 10, 15 people that we can personally call or um, email and invite them to come. I think you all have the materials. Um, so, but if you need anything, I can certainly help. And I'm wondering if there are any other um, organizations other than the ones that I mentioned that, oh, ABC as well is, is an organization on my list. Um, and I think I pretty much, I think that's pretty much everywhere. Is there any, oh, Survival Center, Family Outreach of Amherst. I covered a lot of bases, but I'm wondering if there are other places that we should be um, sending it to. And if there are any thoughts on that or any other strategy about how to reach more folks and invite more folks to be there. Um, I, I will also, by the way, be sending an email out to the folks on the portal that have said they want to be contacted. They're going to get a very special invite 
Um, and then perhaps I think BAM has received um, the information as well. Um, so that, that will be happening. And then we'll also send the information out in the uh, reparations for Amherst newsletter upcoming. Any other thoughts on that? Okay, so can we all commit to 5, 10, 15 people that we're going to reach out to? All right, awesome. Um, so just finalizing, I wanted to really uh, make sure that we were all on the same page about the way that the evening is going to look. I did have the opportunity to be at the Hitchcock for an event yesterday, so I got to see the space, and it's such a lovely place. Um, as I said, the bus will be stopping there. It will be having temporary bus stop for that evening, right in the right in their driveway there. Um, so that that will be good. And so I wondered if anybody has an idea for um, just sort of the program for the night how we might want to frame things. I have some ideas, but I certainly would love to hear input on that. Well, I think Dr. Shabazz said it right at our last meeting um, that this is an opportunity really for the AHRA to be in listening mode. Um, and whether that is, uh, of course, I, I would imagine that we would want to um, begin with some sort of framework that uh, while from my, in my mind, the way that I would imagine or, or what I might imagine could happen is that there may be residents of African heritage that are there that want to speak about their experience being Black in Amherst. Um, and what reparations means to them um, and, and, and all, all sorts of things. And I think we want to have some really good framework in the beginning, inviting that to be the priority of the evening, um, first and foremost. Yes, Yvonne. Well, I, you know, I, at, at the last meeting, we talked about having some um, materials that was about education about what the framework would be. And I think it would be important to have those materials there for folks or distributed beforehand about like, I would say what our charge is and, and kind of goals at what we're at the information we're trying to get at, not to shut people down, but to actually give some context around what kinds of stories we're trying to gather that would be most helpful. So I think it's important for us to have that in, in advance and to have someone address that. I, I'm sadly, I mean, I would do it myself, except I can't come that day. I would, but you know, I think there needs to be this sort of at the same, you know, like um, setting up what the framework is, but also being welcoming and really welcoming people to share. Cause this, you know, some of these stories are really difficult. You know, I was in a session, a diversity session where you know, there were maybe five people of color in a room, you know, of about 35 people. And some of the stories that were shared um, by the facilitators who happened to be, you know, they were BIPOC. But I found myself tearing up because some of the stories that they were telling about like inadequacy and, uh, you know, systemic racism around housing, which touches, you know, a, you know, like a chord with me because of my family experience. There's just all of these triggers mm -hmm. that make it so people will either share or not share. Mm -hmm. And so I think there needs to be this context around share what you can, everything is welcome, right? But we're within this context, we're trying to, to get at this kind of information. And this is the stuff that will help move things forward in a productive way. You know, and then we need to have a really great facilitator who can like move people, you know, move people in the right direction. And then, you know, like have there be boundaries around like how much time people can talk and what, you know, like if someone is on the rails, it's like, yes, we hear what you're saying, but let's move on to someone else who can give us more information. You know, there has to be that very thoughtful managing of the event because we don't want it so that there's folks there who could talk and they don't. 
and we you know we don't want the time to be taken up with folks who might take up time when we want to get to other folks who have things to say we're trying to make it so that it's and i think that should be the number one thing that gets expressed to folks when they show up is that we're trying to hear everybody's stories mm -hmm. so we're trying to manage the time and get at things you know in a timely way so that we can get as much as we can and that this is is one of a few like this isn't the only opportunity that folks might be able to um you know contribute but i guess my other part to that is are i i assume we're recording i think you mentioned maybe like actv would be recording i don't um, know so, and that was a question actually that lynn had asked me so alexis i see you um thumbing up do you yeah. Are you is someone from Amherst Media coming or? Yeah, so this intending on coming with an intern to be able to cover the event. But if that if it is too much of a in the with the intent that whoever could not physically come to the event, that they would still get the information. But if it is intending on being a space where sensitive information, I, I, I don't know, I guess that we could tell them, but also if it's going to create an environment that is not going to be conducive to actually sharing that information, I could either not film certain parts, cut some out or just not. Well, my, my, uh, my idea is often people don't want to be on camera, but they don't mind being audio recorded. Hmm. So maybe it's about having an audio recording instead of a video recording of of the event and i mean i leave that up to the folks who make decisions like that but often people don't want to be on camera but they don't mind if their voice because you know you can't necessarily identify people from their voice but often you can from their image you know um so that was my question is are we recording it even if it's just for our own you know as a committee being able to go back and sort of glean information from specific comments from the audio recording you know and then the, you know, at this event, talking about subsequent events so that folks know that they can come back, you know, or they can have folks, you know, they get an idea. <laughs> this one's important because it's going to, it's going to set the tone for the future ones that we do. Right. So there might be people who didn't want to come or they're, you know, I'm going to go scope it out. And if they have another one, I'll bring my two friends with me or I'll bring mm -hmm. my three, you know what I'm saying? So having it be like, yes, we're doing this one, but the other two, maybe there's one more in the spring or two more in the spring. And we can tell, we can announce that so folks can plan to bring people with them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. To everything you said, um, I think, uh, the idea of beginning by giving some context to our charge and really um, uplifting what it is we're trying to do here on this committee, first and foremost, um, and then also giving some sense of we're here to listen and so that we can listen to everyone, we'll have to have some management of that of the time. Yeah. Um, and so we might think about creating a brief slideshow. I'm not a big slideshow person, um, but I can definitely work with somebody to do that just to show our charge and some other pertinent information to set the scene, so to speak, and, and the context for the night. Um, and in terms of recording, I really want to hear from other folks on that. My preference would be that it would be only for internal use, um, but I am certainly not, I, I'm, I, I, I would be very, very curious what other people think about that. Um, I think I saw, uh, hold on, let me just check because I can see order. I think I saw Dr. Rhodes and then Alexis. Yeah, I, I keep hearing uh, sharing and and people sharing and uh the sensitivity of that uh and which, which i applaud the question i have is is um is this just for people sharing their stories or is it for gaining feedback from people in terms of the reaction as it regards reparations in general or in specific uh because uh i was trying to go back and i to find the agenda 
uh, for that evening uh, that was listed on the um, materials you, material you sent uh, to us, uh, Michelle. Mm -hmm. And But I couldn't go back to find it on my phone. Uh, so, so I couldn't determine whether, hey, uh, that was in fact going to be the overall objective of, of the evening or what, whether there was whether there were other objectives objectives for the evening and i think those need to be clarified because uh when um uh, people come they will come with some kind of expectations and we need to know we need to be able to try to manage those expectations beforehand Absolutely. And I think that will be part of that opening statement and creating the framework. Um, I think we're going to have a combination of people who want to share their experiences of um, being Black in Amherst or otherwise just share experience of being a resident in Amherst. I think we're also going to hear people that have opinions about eligibility, about use of funds. The one area that I want us to be really aware about is the debate on whether local reparations or not local reparations, because as far as I'm concerned, we're doing local reparations already. <laughs> so we'll be sort of spinning wheels if we have that debate. I think pointing back to our charge of this is what we were charged with looking at. Um, and we're already um, moving forward with the municipal reparations plan. Um, but we may want to even figure out some more detailed framework. And so Alexis, please. Um, yeah, I was just going to ask, well, okay. I guess the, the first thing was um, a, a desire for like, and I forget the word that we used to use at Hampshire, but like community guidelines so that basically getting to um, what you all were saying about like, you know, like what happens if somebody is, you know, saying something maybe that's inappropriate or like, you know, how do we um, maybe like a posted list of guidelines or something that we can point back to um, something to, oh, that we would agree. Agreements. That's what you're yes. about. Community um, agreements. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I, I think that that helps a lot. Also, um, my and, and I, I also want to like kick it back to everyone else to hear their thoughts, too. But I guess my intention with the covering of this event, um, I wasn't intending on including the sensitive um, parts of it, but more of the informative pieces of it. Um, because the last time that we sort of talked about it, um, apart from our entire meetings, which someone would have to watch, you know, be aware of, you know, the progression of it is, you know, a lot of people still are very uninformed about it. Um, and hear us, you know, okay, where are we now? And then also hearing the questions from the community and getting those answers, I think, would be very helpful um, in sharing that information with our community when we're, when we're talking about outreach and we're talking about spreading this information, when we're relying on, you know, just the people who get there physically, especially when there's, you know, people are still dealing with COVID, people are still dealing with, um, um, you know, being um, scared to come out. So I, I think it's a, a, a part of accessibility that I don't want to ignore. Um, but I also am very sensitive to the sensitive pieces of it and the um, the testimonials. Um, though I guess I'm curious if people, and and maybe this would be too much work in the in the moment, and maybe it would be too much and and maybe um, a barrier um, to ask people to consent. But I don't know if anyone would be would want to be open and want the community to know what it is like and what people are really dealing with right now and have been dealing with. Um, and, and I think that that's potentially a, a creating a platform to be able to amplify those voices. So I, I would definitely like to hear that, but I, I guess my initial intention was to film the panel um, and to get the informative pieces for the community specifically. Yeah, I really appreciate that. And I'm just so grateful that we're going to have you there in that capacity. Um, and 
uh, you know, we did start to talk about media presence last week. And I think that that sort of is also part of what we're saying here, right, is um, do do we ask our media partners to be aware of um, quoting people without their permission or however we might want to look at that? Do we have different segments of the listening session, perhaps a segment where we're giving an overview and we're answering and, and taking questions um, about our charge and eligibility. And then do we have a separate segment of the meeting where we're really just listening to people's stories and maybe that piece is not um, going to be just sort of made available publicly unless that person says that they, they would like their voice to be amplified somewhere. Um, but I do think it could be a lot in the moment to ask people and they may not know in that moment, you know, once whatever is expressed, it could feel. Um, so Dr. Shabazz, please. Requesting uh, co-host status, please, to share screen. I've formulated a slide to uh, try and uh, uh, express a little bit of what I've been hearing and to see if we have uh, consensus to, uh, to move in that direction. Um, you see here, I'm, uh, what I've noted is, um, uh, and, and I'm adding this in, but perhaps to begin with a reflection uh, and brief statement about the town, uh, the town statement of its commitment to end structural racism, which gives rise to the entire uh, reparative justice uh, planning process as a part of the town. Um, then from, as people have mentioned, to perhaps flesh a slide or mention briefly what our actual charge is to find funding streams and to create a, um, a plan that is uh, expected uh, to, uh, to go before the town via its town council and in general uh, by uh, sometime in June. Um, perhaps a statement, one sentence or what have you of what reparative justice is and uh, you know, reflection upon uh, one, the town's support of uh, federal action, whether um, the uh, uh, current uh, House Resolution 40 or uh, uh, other forms of federal action, a, a presidential executive commission, um, uh, a presidential commission by executive order um, that we could also, um, you know, just briefly outline what, what reparative justice is. Also, we, this is an occasion to bring up knowing the ropes and uh, reflecting upon our ropes document with its, uh, its emphasis on respect, on uh, acknowledging oops and ouches that sometimes we might go into an area of saying things, expressing things in a way that uh, uh, impacts someone's feelings uh, uh, and, 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 and there could be an ouch involved or and then vice versa once acknowledging that we may have misspoken we can say oops and then you know and then uh, under with the understanding of what that means and and be able to kind of move on uh and the other points on process being able to pass not feeling put upon to say any anything but that we are here to listen so on and so forth brief uh acknowledgement of knowing the ropes and then the note about the presence of media and whatever ground rules we've laid about that, that uh, no one is to be quoted on the basis of their statement in this public hearing without um, the media uh, speaking to that person after the event is over and getting their express consent to, to, exp uh, to, to, to publish those, uh, to publish any, any words or any remarks that a speaker makes that we can just you know, establish this is what we've requested of any members of the media that are present. And, uh, and certainly um, uh, we wanted you to know that, uh, that, that that may be the case. And then finally, uh, overall, we, we've mentioned the need for facilitation, Part of that facilitation is not only the ability to kind of ask someone to, to uh, pause or to rein it in or to stop if they're going into an area that's that's clearly out of bounds, that's that's off the ropes, if you will. And uh, but at the same time, um, to just facilitate in the way of you know pointing to time, you know, that it's three minutes with grace 
You know, if you're in a real flow, you're making a real point, everybody's kind of hinging on your words, you know, well, all right, we ain't going to come in and break the flow and talk about three minutes. But, uh, but if it, if you are, you know, at some point kind of going beyond what's necessary to make your point, then, uh, 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 and, and everybody's kind of, you know, starting to tune out, then okay, you know, excuse me, can you kind of wrap up that we'll try to do it as gracefully as we can. Those are some of the things that, that I've heard so far relative to how we can manage this event and make it a very, uh, uh, a, a great listening session. Uh, um, and so I just wanted to flash that. The other area is the possibility of, as something of a framework, to note the five injury areas of systemic oppression and slavery as acknowledged within the reparations movement in COBRA, NARC, other groups, it's, it's within international. Some of this finds expression within international protocols around, uh, around uh, uh, reparations, but it's the broad areas of criminal punishment, crime and punishment, um, as an area of disparity, our age of mass incarceration that we're in. Um, secondly, education, or the so-called achievement gap, the uh, health, or uh, so-called health disparities, public uh, health disparities. Uh, wealth, which is often looked at, you know, particularly in terms of land, housing, as forms and as the most common forms in which people in the country acquire or develop. Uh, um, uh, wealth, that is money beyond income, the income that you need to live on, that that wealth is uh, uh, sometimes talked within the area of, of the housing gap, uh, the home, home uh, homes and how land ownership gaps. And then finally, peoplehood. And um, uh, I, I, I keep deferring Referring to go into that because I could talk all night, but but that's uh, where a lot of things like um, somewhere I was reading recently this notion of the symbolic conquest of public space. How is public space okay? Not in the form of land now per se, but public space in terms of public memory, in terms of public um, uh, cult the, the the culture of the people. How are uh, where are where's black people in the in that form of public space in 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 Amher? So I'll just leave it at that and say these are just some some notes that I I have toward the uh, the listening session. Dr. Shabazz, thank you so much. That was really really helpful framework and um, really great. Just taking in everything that I heard too. So. Um, Let's use that. Let's save that, I think, um, and and have that be our framework for the night. And um, Alexis, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm so sorry that I'm going to have, I have another meeting at three, but um, I just wanted to ask if we knew about the um, audio situation. If not, I, you know, how to reach me, but it would be great to know about that. Um, and if I need to bring any microphones or anything in order for people to be able to hear us. Um, or anyone better, um, it would be great to know um, in in enough time in advance. Absolutely, I am on that. I will um, contact the Hitchcock Center. There was another matter I wanted to, being at the event yesterday, they had some volunteers helping with parking. Um, I think there are some logistics that we're gonna need to cover. I We really have no way of knowing if five people or 500 people are gonna come. And so um, because we don't have the answer to that question, we have to be prepared, I think. I do think that this is going to be um, a, uh, an event that will have a large turn up. And so I'll, I think microphones in that case may be necessary. And so I will certainly check in on that and let you know. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Dr. Shabazz, I see that your hand is, is up. I wasn't sure. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. No worries. Um, and so just at there, we have another item on the agenda, our institutional partners. Um, and I just want to mention in terms of the, um, listening session that again, we will have members of the student Senate from Amherst college. Um, I am going to personally reach out to, um, folks at Hampshire college, which we really haven't connected with at all. Um, unless somebody has, uh, 
like Alexis, if you have a contact at Hampshire, then you think that it would be better for you to reach out or you know somebody you'd like me to reach out to, please let me know. Maybe Pamela has an idea about that. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah, Pamela, so, please. Yeah, so Jen and I uh, just met last week with the um, chief diversity officer who actually has a different title, but the vice president over at Hampshire. So I um, can communicate with her anything that you'd like for me to, sh to share with them. That would be awesome if you could send um, the uh, the the JPEG of all the information with the listening session. And you know what? I'll send you a little blurb that I've been using for everybody, Pamela, and then that way you can take from that. That would be really great. Um, I also wanted to um, share that I had the opportunity last week, I think it was, I'm losing track of time, um, to meet with the um, Dean of the Fine Arts and Humanities Department at UMass, Dr. Barbara Crothammer, um, and the Associate Dean Joyce Bowman. And we had a really, really good discussion about ways that the uh, students at UMass can be involved in this process um, and ways that we can work together to educate our community um, through the Fine Arts and Humanities Department. And it was a really, really positive. And I, I believe that we'll have um, some further development of that um, and more collaboration as we go along. Um, so Pamela, I see that your hand is still up. Just checking in with you. Good. Okay. Um, so let me just take a quick look here. I know there's some things on our agenda because agenda, it would I think Jennifer was out for a little bit and and some there were some different holdovers maybe on the agenda from that, like for example, the annual stabilization transfer. Um, that is being, we already discussed that. That was unanimously recommended um, by the Finance Committee last week in the amount equivalent to the cannabis tax revenue from FY22, and it will be um, voted this evening at the town council meeting by the full town council. Um, so that's on there. The CDBG should have dropped off a while ago, but that's okay. We'll make sure for next time. Um, and so I'm going to just um, ask once again for public comment. Oh, Dr. Shabazz, I'm sorry. I see your hand. Yes, just um, quickly. In terms of this image here, um, where are we? Are we on this side? Yeah, so that's exactly right. Like apparently that last night it was opened up. Yep. So that can be two classrooms or it can be opened up to one. And so it's got a, think, like a divider that can collapse that can. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's how I understand it. Yeah. And and what's kind of the general capacity we're looking at 60 here or. You know what? That's a great question that I should have an answer to and I don't. So I'll find out. Um, I'm not sure what the what their maximum capacity is for the two spaces combined. And they do have another, I think, third classroom um, that's separate uh, where the last night the auction items were in. So if okay. there were to be, you know, we should have a back, we should have a plan here <laughs> if there are more people than, you know, capacity well, handle. There, there, there certainly is, is, is that uh, kind of, kind of a, a logistical matter we might want to look at, but um, but just going with what we have and just thinking whether, because uh, my last time in there, of course, many years ago, pre-pandemic uh, was an event we organized, uh, Kathleen Anderson, myself, some others had organized their uh, community summit. And um, I seem to recall us being in a circle maybe, uh, you know, or, or there could be audience styles chairs and if the uh, AHRA members uh, that, that can want to kind of sit in one area up on uh, uh, within an audience framework or, or if we can go more circular, we'll see. Uh, there might even be like pillows on the ground you can do, but, uh, but it's just, uh, yeah, that'll be something to sort of um, begin because where are we now? We're um, 
uh, with like the 18th today. So this is what in 17th. Yeah. 17th. So this is in 10 days or. Yeah. yeah. It's, mm -hmm. Okay. So we might have to uh, break down whatever help I can give. I'll just leave it as that, that, uh, you know, round logistics, just give me a yeah. shout what part I can do. Well, you know what would be great, Dr. Shabazz, if I can organize with my dear friend, who's the director of development there, who has helped us so much with this, um, if I can organize with her for the two of us to meet there um, and just go over a plan so that we, you know, have an idea of how we want things set up and and things like that, would would you be sure. open to that? Okay, great. Um, Dr. Rhodes? Yeah, one, one of the things that uh, we need to check out with that is whether or not uh, they will set up those chairs or are we going to have, have to have some help setting up those chairs? And if so, uh, we need to know that so that we, i.e. people in this assembly, uh, can be present to do that uh, before people arrive. As I remember uh, from events that I have participated in and also sponsored, uh, we had to set those set that up ourselves, and those chairs and things were made available. But you need to know where those chairs are going to be located, and how one accesses them. And then the second, uh, the other side of that is uh, setting it up uh, as taking it down. Uh, so anyway, there there are there are there are some tasks that we are going to have to be uh, tasked with. Uh, with this in terms of this event. It's not something where they are automatically going to pr provide all the kinds of uh, services that one would expect. Uh, I don't think that's a part of this. You, you know, you kind of feel bad for us to say, let's bring some bottled water there. Right, yeah, well, I, I, would, I wouldn't suggest they, they water will. have something else. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't be happy about bottled water. Probably. They're living building. They're beautiful living building. Um, um, are the Amos College students available to help with that? I believe they would certainly yeah. be happy to help with that. And so that's a great suggestion. Suggestion. I'm speaking with Cyrus um, tomorrow, so I'll I'll ask him if he can arrive at six o'clock. I'll bring my thermos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll figure oh, that water. out. <laughs> I think they have a something or other. I forget. I don't remember, but I'll check in with Kim and see. Um, yeah, they might have one of those big, like, cooler things you fill with. Sister Michelle, you were just there yesterday. I know, but they... It it was a catered event. So <laughs> they, um, I will tell you that their toilets take a really long time to flush. I am not joking. Those are important <laughs> items, right? This is we important stuff. That's right. So what happened, that's, that's uh, what you get with zero energy building. Yeah, uh, everybody be ready, Amherst, because it is something. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, great. So I think that about covers everything. Um, <laughs> um, in terms of future agenda, it sounds like I'm going to get and remember just as the rule always to send anything to only myself, Pamela and Jennifer, in terms of if there's uh, eligibility and use criteria framework that you'd like to be brought forward for the next meeting. Um, and then also, um, of course, anything else. Um, but that will be on our next agenda. And we can start to which is gonna be on Monday, okay? So we'll have a meeting next Monday, which is the, let's see, the 24th. And that will be right before our our listening session. And then- That's the week I can't attend. So I, I won't be okay. here that. be a chance for some last check-in on the- Yeah, on the 24th, yep. Um, and there may be a couple other agenda items that or a, one other agenda item um, that that is coming to mind, but I'm going to wait to talk about that one until we have I have more sense of it. Um, so I, I don't have anything else other than those items um, right now, but if something arises, please just email me. Um, and are there any other um, let me just go ahead and quick, quickly call another period of public comment. 
if you would like to make a public comment um, at this time, I think everybody that was here was here when I read the statement, so I'm not going to read it again, but if you'd like to make public comment, please go ahead and raise your hand. All right, so not seeing any public comment, are there any other member announcements or anything that a member would like to add before we adjourn? Um, oh, sorry, Dr. Schoss. Just with respect, yeah, um, just mentioning that um, the uh, HR 40, the Commission to Study and Develop Reparation Proposals for, for African Americans, um, Sheila Jackson Lee was recently uh, uh, speaking uh, on where, where the uh, legislation is, where, where the efforts are. Um, and it's noted that uh, we have toiled and struggled, told our people to take the bag off your head because there's a misinterpretation in the whole community. The study is the roadmap for the physical and mental trajectory of reparations. Um, the bill did, has, you know, of course, made it through um, a hearing, uh, but has not been scheduled any further in this uh, legislative uh, uh, year, and that um, the, uh, uh, you know, and so it, it's something that she is still out there actively uh, um, seeking to, you know, push within the, within the Congress. But at that point, um, she's really calling for, uh, in a recent uh, piece, calling for broader societal acceptance of the uh, of reparative justice of, of working for reparations, and that um, you know we have to do more as we are doing here locally to try and educate, to try and uh, 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 pave the way for for greater societal acceptance of action at the federal level. That's all. Thank you, and you know that's been on our agenda every week to do an update on that. So, um, as just a standing item, so really appreciate. Is there a recent piece that she um, like an an opinion piece, or was it a? Um, like it, a it was a news coverage um, uh, five days ago. Uh, okay. that I can send out to you. Please do, yeah, and we'll make sure everybody gets it. All right. Um, any other comments before we adjourn? All right, well, thank you everyone. It was really another great meeting and I'm adjourning at 3.09 p.m.